Recording, we will investigate the transient uh, behavior of an RC series uh, AC circuit. Again, uh, my tool will be LT Spice on an iMac platform. So start a new blank schematic. Let me make it as big as I can here. And voila. Okay. So uh, I like to draw a rectangles with wires first, and then I'll put my components where the capacitor will be the load in this circuit. Do not forget as well to put a point of reference. Let's pick our wires. I'm gonna start here and here and end right there. So let me hit escape. I'm going to right mouse click again, draft, component, get the power source, so voltage. I'm going to say OK, bring it in, hit escape, OK. Um, let's go ahead and set some values for this. I'm going to go to advanced. This is, will be a sine wave, so go over here. Uh, the offset value will be zero, OK. Uh, the amplitude will be 10 volts. For now, let's go ahead and put a frequency of 60 hertz. Again, amplitude 10 volts. Phase shift from uh, the zero for the source will be zero degrees. Okay, excellent. All right, fantastic. So now we're gonna put a resistor here and a capacitor here. So edit, uh, I'm sorry, draft, component, resistor. Control R to switch around. Oops, put in a couple. So let me just put this one here. Let me delete this one here. Right mouse click, go to edit, get the scissor tool, and kill that resistor. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and draft again. Component, capacitor. I'm going to say OK. Let's take it right there, escape. Okay, and I'm going to pick a five millifarad capacitor or a microfarad. I'm going to say five microfarad. Okay, uh, my resistor here will be a 10 ohm. Okay, now depending on the frequency, this whole circuit could be either resistive or capacitive okay so as we increase the frequency we could see that x of c will decrease and it will become short which means the circuit will be more resistive as we decrease the frequency the x of c increases right ultimately it becomes an open circuit Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and prove that. So that is my uh, uh, starting assumption. Okay. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and put a ground here. So let me just label a uh, ground right there. Let me just put a little lower. Okay. It's, it's fine now. And let's get a wire and go from here to here. We're good. Let's get our transient uh, uh, analysis set up. So we're gonna go to draft, spice directive, right mouse click here and help me edit is where you're gonna pick up the transient, okay, so we're not doing any of these, the transient analysis. Uh, for now, let's say you didn't have an idea how much time do you need for your oscilloscope settings for uh, time per division horizontally, okay? Uh, let's say I put one second. This is the same example we did with the RL circuit, okay? So we'll start here and I'll show you what the issues are and how to fix it, okay? So I'm gonna say okay, all right? So I'm gonna put my transient, typically I'll leave it here. Now I run the, the, uh, the, the uh, simulator with the little running man over here. You can see here, it automatically draws a graph for me that is limited to one second horizontally, okay? So now, 
we can try the signal that's in here. And you could see right away, okay, that a lot of uh, periods going on for that particular 60 hertz. Now, can we uh, adjust this? Yes. Uh, can we go lower or higher? We should go lower here. So uh, 0 0.1 will give you a good view. Let's try that. We're going to go even lower than that. Okay, so again, I'm going to go ahead and run and put my probe right here. Here's the, uh, here's the graph. Okay, that's pretty good, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to capture less cycles and have more resolution. So I'm going to go by half. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and go 0 0.5 and do this. Let's see what happens here. Run. And again, now we have 50 milliseconds. And I'll put the probe right here. Okay. Much, much better. Now we can compare V sub C versus V input. So V out versus V in. Okay. So we have V in as our reference for the voltage supplied by the power supply an offset of zero DC and a phase angle of shift of zero degrees. Good, so now is a good time to go ahead and check out V sub C or VC. I just clicked on it, let's see what happens. As you can see at this frequency, it's following along. Okay, so that means the voltage drop against the resistor is almost nil. Okay, so it's almost as if I have an open. Well, do we for that capacitor? What happens if I increase the frequency? Let's see what happens to V sub C. Okay, so we go over here. Let's close this and let's go by factor of 10. And let's go ahead and do 600. This one, you're gonna to have to go the other way. 0 0.05 to get the same scale. Let's run this, okay? Let's get our reference, which is our VN or your source. Let's make this big enough so we can actually see. And let me just drag it over here so I can actually grab the other one. And there you have it. Notice now, it's starting to shift in an angle and it's starting to get lower. Let's increase the frequency even more. The idea is as we increase the frequency, keeping the same capacitor, V sub C will decrease because X of C is decreasing. Okay. All right. So that's the point here. So uh, this observation is what you need to do when you're writing a lab and then you have to mathematically prove it. Okay. So let's go ahead and go by factor of 10 again. So we're gonna go over here. So let me just close the simulator here. And we're gonna change this one to 6K. Say by factor of 10. And make sure your transient analysis is also set up properly. So if you're going by factor of 10 over here, just go by factor of 10 to the to minus one again over here. All right, let's run it. Let's get these the uh, output as big as we can. Let's compare, again, your reference is your source right here versus the output right here. And notice now it decreased even further, almost by half. Okay, fantastic. So let's go ahead and increase even more. Notice my signal coming in from the source is still the same, except that V sub C is decreasing. Okay, let's go ahead and increase even more the frequency of the generator. And we're gonna go by, so we had 6K, we're gonna go to another factor of 10, 60K, 60 kilohertz. 
Okay, so we're going to go over here and compensate from here. Right? So let's see what happens when you run this. Again, it's always good to acquire your original signal, the input right here. This is your reference. And we're going to compare it to the output now. And voila, you have even more attenuation. Okay, so I hope this brings in the point that as you, as you increase the frequency, X of C decreases. And sure enough, X of C, right, is 1 over C omega, or C 2 pi f. So the frequency is in the denominator of that fraction. As you increase the frequency, the whole fraction does what? Or you increase the frequency, the whole fraction decreases.